Welcome, everybody. This is the Internet Marketing Unleashed podcast, as well as the My Podcast World uh, Blab show. Glad to have you on board with us. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology. And either here or here is my co-host, Gordon So. And either there or there, because I notice when this records, it flips people around, is Dwayne Richards, CMA. So welcome, gentlemen, to the show. Thanks, Scott. Are you going to say hello, Gordon? Hey, everyone. How are you doing? It's Gordon. You know, normally, um, normally I'm not in a suit and a, and a tie. And somebody was asking me today if I was actually going to a funeral. And the, the answer is no. <laughs> I had uh, Scott and, and Dwayne, I, I had the um, the awesome privilege of speaking at the Century 21 office this morning. Mm. And uh, quite a number of real estate agents there. And they all fell in love with the idea of podcasting. Um, you know, both of both, both of you, I guess, Dwayne and, and Scott, you taught a course on reverse marketing in Toronto uh, about like what a month or two months ago. Yeah. And Sabir Tawala, who's the broker owner of Century Twenty One, has been looking at podcasting and he's been telling his agents about it. They have some somewhat like two two hundred plus agents in their office right now, and um, you know they're hearing the successes that you're having, we're having, some of our clients are having, and so. Make a long story short, there's going to be probably half a dozen to a do- dozen of their real estate agents who will be starting podcasts. Some of them will be specifically real estate uh, related. And, you know, we actually had someone there who's a real estate agent and she actually just wants to do a podcast on health and wellness. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, that's her passion. And, and they really believe that um, by having a podcast, it's going to be... You know, kind of the, the kind of the idea we talked about today was it's the modern day version of how to win friends and influence people. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Right. So as you can imagine, in the insurance business, not to pick on anybody, the insurance business. Sometimes, you know, when you're in the insurance business and you walk in the room and and people say, "Oh, here comes that insurance agent," it's almost like, you know, somebody's going to take blood from me or something. And and in a way, real estate's got kind of become that way as well because every third or fourth person you talk to they're in the real estate business and people are just getting tired of everyone saying hey i'm an agent can you buy and sell what can you list with me can you buy with me and so through podcasting they're going to be able to create their brand uh create um authority create influence and we'll use the podcasting to build a nice um, center of influence for them and as we all know in business or in sales it's about creating influence and it's a numbers game, right? So the bigger your network, the potential, the bigger your income. And that's why they're all excited about being able to start various different versions of um, podcasts on, on real estate. And, and by the way, Scott, I think you just recently created uh, I have a courses to help real estate agents, um, right? For podcasting if you're a realtor. And that's there's cool. a lot of different strategies that you can use. I've always said spend... 10 minutes Monday morning after your Monday morning meeting and just go through what are interest rates doing? Is it a buyer's market, a seller's market? Here are some homes that I have. It's a good time to do whatever and just give a couple tips. But after doing this course, we really decided to expand it. And actually the the blab I did, well, the hangout that I did this morning was all about leverage. Mm -hmm. And what it was, was finding people who can take you to the top fast Right. And one of the things that if I was a realtor that I would suggest that that I would do is I would have interviews on my podcast. Mm. So who's the number one home insurance guy in my farm, my area? Right. I go interview him because what you want is you want him to say, hey, I was on Gordon Stowe's Realty uh, podcast and uh Here's the link. Go listen. Now, all of a sudden, you're making him look like the hero and the star and everything else. But you're getting exposure to all of those people as well. And then the other thing he was was like, basically, he what we did is we asked the question, who's talking to your potential seller of your home or buyer of your home all the time? The plumber, the electrician, the home reno guy, the, Mm. the, you know, the landscape people. And so you just interview these people, you're giving them great publicity. And at the same time as by the way, 
if you know anybody who's thinking of selling and they don't have a realtor, you know, tell them, obviously I'm the person, you know, they, they should be recommending, right? Because you spend a half an hour or 45 minutes with them, you develop the relationship and, and you just spin through all the people. And then you make sure, and this is what the beauty of my podcast pro is you can have individual players. So I interview Dwayne and I then say, Dwayne, here's some code, put it on your blog and people will be able to listen. So they don't have to come to see me. They'll come to, they'll go to Dwayne's site, listen to Dwayne. And of course on there, I say, go to Scott Patton, Toronto realty.com or whatever my URL is. And then they're going to come and see me. So I'm going to be getting a certain percentage of the traffic that goes to Dwayne's site coming over to me and saying, you know what, I've been thinking about selling and have some sort of offer always, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's the free valuation or it's the, the ebook that tells you, you know, how to prepare your home for selling or the top four mistakes home buyers make in the bubble markets of Toronto, you know, like whatever, you know, whatever that hook is and you would know being in the market. So you go through and you interview all these people and put them on the podcast and you give them, you know, you promote them and everything else. And then they end up reciprocating law of reciprocity. Right. And, and then you just keep coming. Like you may have a great talk with a landscaper and you say, you know what, I'd like to have you on again in a couple months. And you just bring them in every two or three or four months. So you're top of their mind. And every time they're talking, you know, cause they could be talking about, well, how do you, like it's spring. How do you prepare for the spring? You know, make your yard looks good in the spring. Well, it's fall. How do you get ready for winter or it's summer? How do you keep everything looking good in the summer or what? I mean, there's lots of things that they can talk about. Right. Yeah. And uh, so instead of you being the one knocking on the door, it's these guys are, Oh, I was so cool. I was interviewed on a podcast. Oh, really? You know, yeah, here's the link or I'll send you the link and you can listen to it. And they may send you the iTunes link. They may send you the link to your website. They may send a link to their own website. It just depends on what they do, right? But now you've got these people. And it and because you're, and you do this really well, Gordon, is because you're edifying the landscaper. Mm. He wants everybody. Because here's one of the top realtors in Toronto, and he interviewed me for his podcast. So I must be Absolutely. one of the top landscape people, right? Mm. So every time he goes anywhere, and it's not him saying he's great. It's you saying he's great. That's right. And he will go and he'll talk to people. And when he's knocking on doors, right, he may put a little flyer out and he may put it at the bottom, listen to my interview with Gordon So, top realtor in you know, Toronto or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Makes so much sense, Scott. It's, it's such a simple way to add and build to your list or your circle of influence. So exactly what you said, if I was a landscaper and a real estate agent asked me, if I could be on the show, my answer is obviously going to be yes. So if I have a circle of influence of, let's say, 100 people, and I'm on the show, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tell my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my aunt, my uncle, hey, I was just on you know, the Scott Patton Real Estate Show. You guys get to go and have a listen. So if over time, if over time, let's say the realtor has over 100 episodes, and it's not hard to have 100 episodes, right? Yeah. Um, if you had 100 episodes and you got a lawyer or a, a, a home decorator, or a home inspector, or a mortgage broker, or a real estate lawyer. And by the way, a couple of weeks ago, we remember we accidentally had a Toronto real estate lawyer dropping on our blog. So if you have 100 people and they each have a circle of influence of 100 people, that's that's 10,000 people. You know, my math wasn't that good. I didn't do that well in school, but that's 10,000 people we just had, you know, you could add to your circle of influence. So and that's not including the people that just tune in, because if you go to iTunes, in fact, I'm going to do that right now. If you go to iTunes and you guys are in Toronto, so we'll use Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do a search on real Toronto realtor. I'm not sure if I'm in. Uh, you guys keep talking for a second while I do this. Yeah, you know, we had um, we had somebody who was a mortgage broker who wanted to sit in on this training, a mastermind training on how to help real estate agents use podcasts to make more money. And it looks like she now wants to start a podcast to grow her mortgage business. So it's 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 been a really, really good day. Dwayne, um, welcome. Thanks for being on the call with us. Uh, maybe you could share with the folks 30 seconds, you know, who you are, your background, and what uh, would you been able to do with Blab? Would that be okay? Let me just interrupt for a second because I've okay. got it. 
If you search Toronto Realtor, there is one result in iTunes. On iTunes, wow. There's one person who's podcasting. And what did you type in? You typed in Toronto Realtor iTunes or you just typed in Toronto Realtor? I went into iTunes, the program. Oh, in iTunes, okay. And I just looked. And she's uh, she's a real estate advice. She's a realtor somewhere. I don't know. Is there a name for the realtor? Linda Pizzotto. Yeah, I never heard of her, but uh, that's amazing. If we do real estate. Really in town. Toronto Real Estate. And there's 30, 40,000 realtors in the in the Toronto area. There's so that's, three, that's... Four, six. There are seven results for Toronto real estate. Mm. And I don't think one of them is actually still alive. Wow. The Greater Toronto Area Real Estate Podcast with Michael Dougal. Toronto yeah. Real Estate Podcast with Aldo something or other. True Condos Podcast. Mm. So in other words, the, the market is wide open. Wide open. And so... Let's say, for example, that you're meeting people and you say, you know what? I know realtors are always going to ask for the sale. That's the way we've been trained. I'm a little bit different. Here's my card. Go to and do a bit.ly thing or a page on your site or something. I have podcasts and every week I, I do this, 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 and this. If you want to know what's going on in the, in the realty market in Toronto or Vancouver or New York or wherever you are, right? Just, uh, you know, go listen. And you're going to get a certain percentage of people that really appreciate the fact that you didn't try to sell them. And they're going to go and they're going to be listening to your podcast. Like every time you talk to anybody, you leave them with the option of just, hey, because it's not threatening, right? When you're on your way to work, you can just tune in and you can listen, you know, on the commute to work, whether you're in the car or you're on the subway or whatever, walking the dog, you can just listen and you can find out what's going on in the marketplace. Because I talk about, then you have to have your elevator pitch, right? This is what's really exciting. And if you're a buyer, if you're a seller, I cover all these things and some tips and tricks and blah, 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 and away you go. And then they listen to you. And as they listen to you over and over and over again, they feel like they know you. And then it's like, okay, when I'm, we are ready, honey. Well, my buddy, you know, Gordon, the, the realtor, he, I've been listening to him for a year. I'm way to go. So, all right, Dwayne, it's over to you. All right, we lost Gordon. We lost Gordon, so you you just jump in. Okay, uh, he was asking, uh, I guess, a little bit about what we, you know, who I am is. So based here in Toronto, uh, helping small business owners not just, you know, it's not about how much you make; it's about how much you keep. Um, and from an account, as an accountant, giving business owners strategies on how to not just grow their revenue but keep more money in their pocket. Um, right now in the in the middle of doing some additional learning uh, and one of those one of the things we had was you know this which is blab so a little while ago I started running a blab you know a blab on a Monday night uh, a little bit later than this time slot which was again just about sharing information uh, and again blab is a great way to do that uh, but the next step now, or actually, look, what I'm actually looking at doing now is is putting together the podcast because uh, the podcast, you know, you can record it, put it up on you on, on um, iTunes, put it on our website, and then it's there. Uh, you know, we've done Facebook, you know, we've done Facebook Live and done Periscope and and then the different, you know, different uh, recordings. And uh, last week, I actually wrote a, a guest blog. For a friend's web, uh, for his blog, and it gets you that sort of that quick traffic, but it doesn't, you know, once it's up on Facebook or once you share the link, it, it goes away. Where, um, where you know, I'm getting you know, excited about you know the ability to do the podcast. And again, there's lots of people that I've met to, and, and what Gordon was just saying is to bring on, uh, bring on the subject matter experts. So we're looking at talking about. Um, you know, buy. You know, if you have a business partner doing a, a buy sell agreement, so I I understand as an accountant the importance of doing a buy sell agreement, but by no means am I an expert. So if I go and research, okay, who is the expert lawyer, or expert accountant to structure buy sell agreements to bring them on as a guest, and then I get to let them talk and share their expertise, and I'm getting free I'm getting free content from my podcast. Right. Well, do you consider taking your blab and then just extracting the audio and then do a little editing and you've got your podcast? 
Uh, yeah, I guess we thought about, you know, I think a couple of the blogs we actually actually did publish right to YouTube. So I've done that piece, but again, it's it's there. It doesn't really. Um, so the next step would be to to take that same audio or go back or not as back, but just start going forward and pulling out the uh, and pulling out the audio. Yeah, a great way to create content is to do something like a Blab or a Google Hangout. Then you edit the video, put it up onto YouTube. So now it's on Blab, now it's on YouTube. You could, I suppose, get some technology to live stream it onto Periscope or something. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Then you extract the audio because there is software that will just take a video and pull the audio out. Uh, and then you send the audio over to the Philippines to a transcriber, get it transcribed, and now you've got depending on how long you talk, one, two, three, four, five blog posts, plus you can read through it, pull out Twitter quotes and Facebook status updates out of it as well, all pointing back to here's the original video or here's the YouTube edited video or here's our podcast or here's our main blog or blogs uh, posts that we've done, right? So the idea being to do it once and then have it accessible to people who maybe they don't like watching video, maybe they don't like listening, maybe they like reading, like who knows? There's all sorts of different modalities and you need to be able to, oh yeah, and Andrew just mentioned SlideShare is another good one. Yeah, I got to get into SlideShare, Andrew. I think you're absolutely right. You can do slides and then you can videos and uh, or put your slides in there. And it's great, very popular spot to go in. So. Yeah, you know, Michael Ballard has a huge following using SlideShare. We should get him on here at some point. And talk about that as well. Yes, I guess I guess now live video or video, and, and this is the the newest. Like I know, like my wife, um, her background was in you know technical writing, and they talked about you know single sourcing, so using one source document to to do um, you know online help and and then marketing material and sales material and using that single source. Now the great thing about today's live video. Is they are now doing that for marketing, so that you can do that single that single source, and then just put together what your what your strategy is with it, and then just map it out to say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go blab to YouTube to yeah. You know. It's interesting. I don't know if I don't know if Joel, I know Joel Calm was doing it. I don't know if he's done it yet. Um, but I know he was streaming like three streams on Facebook the other day. But I don't know if anyone's tested. To say, like, if I put put up my phone, and if I had my, I could have my phone up here as a, as a second camera, and I could, you know, I could Periscope. Yeah, you Periscope. can do that. Absolutely. Periscope would, but Periscope would only show me. It wouldn't necessarily show you guys. Now I could Periscope back, like, aim the camera back here. But. Yeah, you can do that too. I know. Um, you don't want to get into overthinking it, right? Like once. No, you know, no. It's just, it's just about using, figure out what's that, what's that best first. So whether right. you know, Blab is great because you can. Relatively easy, right? All you do is you got a Twitter account, you sign in, you call in, and you talk. The guy pushes record, and you're recording it. You're, it's pretty simple, right? Google yeah. Hangouts is a little more technical. The, there are, the other thing that you have to remember too is every time you're using. Like if you use Blab and Google Hang, because I did this, I did a Blab Google Hangout combo, and because mm -hmm. we wanted to trans, we wanted to basically transmit on both platforms, but you needed like 10 megs upload speed. <laughs> well, is big, right? And then you had to make sure all your kids were not on <laughs> Netflix or something, and and so that you could actually, you know, get it up there. And I think, I think sometimes it's like, yeah, you know, you could, but how much hassle do you want? And the same thing with things like I could have it with, there's a program called Wirecast and I could actually be flipping off me or that other image down there and show my screen or show something else or, or so I could have two cameras and, and we're going to get there because we're, we're always going to be constantly improving. But I think in the beginning, it's just kind of like do the one thing and get that. That's just what I find is like get that habit going like every Every Monday, three o'clock, we're doing this. So Monday is turning into my big recording day. I've got I've got four or five recordings that I'm doing today, if not six. Mm -hmm. And you know, so it's just kind of like a half hour here, an hour here, a half hour here, an hour here, and I just bang, 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 and and they're done. Fortunately, I don't do 
and a lot of the talking on some of the topics because I then I'd have to spend the time researching and figure it all out. But I have the expert. That's the beauty of being the interviewer, right? Because that's the right questions. Right. You know, just the other day, uh, Randy Goodman has the Empowerment Radio Show, her podcast, and she was actually interviewing Nadia Melton, who was um, in Miami at the time getting ready to go on a cruise. And Nadia actually has a huge, huge following on Periscope. So mm -hmm. Randy was interviewing her, and while they were doing the interview, um, like what you said, uh, Dwayne, she actually had her Periscope on her, so she was Periscoping her live uh, podcast to her, to, you know, to her her following, uh, while Randy was actually introduce, uh, interviewing her for for. Um, for, for her podcast. Scott, I was just going to mention, um, you have right here a podcast made easy Udemy on, uh, on the corner there, just for some of the folks that are uh, on now. Could you tell us a little bit about um, what that course is? Sure. It's basically how to start your podcast. And about a year and a half ago, I was talking to the people that made the Starbucks app about podcasting and their boss was so excited when we were done. He said, Scott, you got to do a video course. Well, I got this course, I got that course. No, 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 you got to do a video course. So I spent the next couple months, put together the course and it's 10 hours. You don't have to watch all 10 hours because it goes into how to set up your podcast, that sort of stuff. And then people were asking, well, how do you do Google Hangouts or how do you do marketing or how do you improve your voice or whatever? What about a different platform than my podcast world? So I ended up adding sections and adding content over the last year to keep it up to date. Uh, but there was no Google Play podcast. Now there is. So I talked about that. There was no being able to listen to your podcast directly from the radio in your car, CarPlay, AirPlay, CarPlay thing is what it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, so we added, you know, I just keep adding stuff. And then I nice. spun off a bunch of other courses as well. So it's for everybody that comes. You just click on it. It'll take you to Udemy and it's free. Amazing. It's over 10 and a half hours of training, Scott. That's unbelievable. Really, really good information. Thank uh, you. So would it be okay if I maybe just take 30 seconds to, to uh, for a commercial break here? You guys okay with that? So my, my podcast world, so uh, Scott, Pat, Scott Pat and myself are your, your host, co-host uh, today with my podcast world. What's really exciting is, um, you know, earlier this week, Scott, you and I had somebody from the United Kingdom. Over in the UK, somebody who's just learning about podcasting, who wants to get started in podcasting, get their message and brand out to the world. And uh, they register, signed up to my podcast world, and, and they're going to be um, getting their shows on on uh, on iTunes very, very soon. And the neat thing about it is my podcast world, it's, um, it's a no-frills platform, if I could use that word. Easy to set up. Oh, I guess Dwayne just left, right? I thought maybe I disappeared. Sorry, you guys. You know, for ninety nine dollars a year, that's it. You can have unlimited hosting. Although uh, I would say, Gordon, that it's not no frills. I agree it, with you. It I has agree. all the bells and whistles and a few others because those are things that I wanted in a podcast platform. Because in two thousand and nine, I was very upset with my podcast host. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you, Scott. I was trying to. Uh, what's the word I was looking for? Under promise and over deliver, because <laughs> there's so much on my podcast world that you can do. It's, it's crazy. Whether you're brand new or somebody who already has an existing show that's really grown at a fast pace. You know, Randy Goodman, uh, one of my business partners, she's a single mom with four kids, just crushing it in the Toronto area right now. She has her podcast called Empowerment radio show inspiring and motivating entrepreneurs and, and women all around the world. And I think she's now at like 110 or 120 episodes, just growing by leaps and bounds. And I remember when Randy started, she was telling me that her hosting was around $10, $10 a month. And I thought, well, that's amazing, right? If, if we could have a show where, where Scott, I know you had a show where you had over 375,000 subscribers. So I'm thinking, Randy, for $10 a month, if we can get that many subscribers, I'd be happy. Little did I realize a few months ago, she was telling me her hosting is now up to $80 a month. Now, by the way, we're up in Canada. So $80 US, that's like a billion dollars to us, right? <laughs> with this exchange rate, it's, it's a lot of money. So with my podcast, well, at a flat rate of a hundred bucks a year, that, that's in incredible. And then earlier today, um, somebody from Chicago signed up 
to use the podcast world. And this individual is someone I've known for over 20 plus years. Mm. And uh, he's in the direct sales network marketing industry. He's currently, uh, and I'm not promoting, I'm not here to promote a, a specific network marketing company or any network market. If you're network marketing, fantastic. Uh, this individual just happens to be making a seven figure income right now as we speak. Very, very successful. And now he's going to, start a podcast he's in my podcast role and he believes by doing that and getting his show on itunes and on is it google play scott google yeah, play with android google device. devices now he's got the opportunity of um you know exposing his his brand to possibly millions of people in in over 100 different countries so very exciting very exciting time to, to be podcast I don't know. Back you can use it as a way to uh, to prospect for sure, but you can also use it as a way for retention. And what I mean by that is if you've got a large, for example, if you're a company and you've got a thousand employees or if you're a network marketer and you've got 10,000 people in your downline, it's a way for you to talk directly to those people. So you can give them some hiring stuff. You can give them you can give them some training and uh, and grow that and they feel like they're dealing with you as opposed to their upline i mean that's one of the reasons why they had an upline because you had to train five people who train five people who train five people and you can shortcut that by working with everybody through using your podcast so the idea of for sure so, so then what happens is for example let's suppose that you're the leader of your group and you say okay i'm going to talk about something you know how to keep your motivational level up or something all of your leaders can listen to it and then they can comment on it because if you look at talk shows and if you look at the news radio and everything else they're all talking about what somebody else said so you know what this morning gordon talked about you know how to motivate yourself and keep your 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 fire going and everything else and he said this and this and this and i just want you to know that what i do every morning to start up my day is that and that and that and this is something else that I, and so you end up sort of riffing on. And now all of a sudden you've got the one 20 minute episode multiplied by, you know, your hundred frontline people by your thousand next level, by your 10,000 next level. Well, what does that do when you're looking at, you know, search engine optimization, right? And everybody's looking, yeah. everybody is just crazy. You just end up dominating categories. That makes a lot of sense, right? And and now you're able to train your entire organization. Doesn't matter where they are, right? So if I live in Toronto and somebody's in in Vancouver where you are, Scott, or they could be, they could be in China. It doesn't matter, right? You could. Actually... Our friend Joe, who's traveling to Europe and Russia yeah. and China all the time, which is great. You've got that you know personal touch and everything else. But what happens when he's in China and not in Russia? Well, exactly. He could be, he could be just giving out his message, having it closed captioned or dubbed over for Russia because he doesn't speak Russian, I don't think. And and then he could be continually giving that feedback to those people or that motivation to those people. Yeah, absolutely. And folks, for those of you who just joined us, please feel free to um, go into the chat box and just um, type in any questions you have. And Scott and myself will do our best to try to help answer them for you. Right. So I there's a course here below me. If you click on it, it's free. It's usually $20. But for anyone that shows up at the Blab and you want to learn how to do podcasting, there's, it takes you right through every step so that by the end of, and it's 10 hours long, but it, I have a lecture that tells you how to spend 20 minutes of watching the videos, follow the steps, and you'll be done. So it's not like it's hours and hours of work to get a podcast up. Awesome. It's kind of neat, Scott. I, you know, when I was, um, I was probably about... I was I was probably about sixteen or seventeen at the time. Remember, I just got my driver's license, so this was years and years and years ago. I don't even want to tell you guys how old I am, right? And I'm driving along my dad's um, thirty-five, probably. I think he had like a '66 Pontiac Buick or something like that. And I'm driving along the highway, and I'm listening to to a radio, a sports radio show, years and years ago. A guy named Mark Hepshire. I don't know if you know that name or not. No. And um, so he's been on every type of sports radio show you can imagine that the best of the best of what he does. I mean, he knows just about every sport. And last last decade, he's probably been with um, Channel 11 News right here in Toronto. But um, recently, uh, a lot of them got let go. 
right? We all know about the four-year plan. It, it doesn't really work for many people anymore. Um, how many people are at the same job for 40 years, you know, for even four years, let alone 40 years? So he was let go. And uh, some of his um, co-workers from the television business actually decided to start their own podcast. Mm. And that's what they did. And it's kind of neat because for them, being in being in the television business, being in the radio business, they're already celebrities. Yeah. They didn't even really need to build up a following. All they did was make that transition for, well, instead of the, I, I don't even know that the television radio industry, instead of the ten, tens of millions of dollars behind them in that corporate structure, for they literally just bootstrapped with their own podcast and they're already making money from sponsors. It's incredible. They already have sponsors that are actually sponsoring their shows and they're already monetizing their passion uh, by starting a, their own podcast. Would you be able to touch a little bit on that, Scott? If, if somebody says, you know, if I'm going to start a podcast, uh, is it is it something is it something that you can actually monetize and make money short term, long term? What would you well, say? Well, I was going to say that there was a a. Uh newspaper reporter here who was let go by the newspaper in the sports as well. Okay. And he, and he started a podcast. And the next thing you know, this newspaper was publishing his podcast wow. on their site because they didn't want everybody leaving to go listen to him. He was a very well respected uh, reporter. Uh, so, you, you know, it's funny, like you just say, okay, you know, you don't want to hire me. I'm going to go do this. And it's like, wait, 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 we'll sponsor you or whatever because we want your content on our site. And he's probably making more than he was making when they had him as an employee and they could have just had him do it. Um, so there's that kind of, uh, that kind of side to it. Um, and having said that, I forgot what you asked me. Monetize it. Can you, can you make money as a podcast? So here's the thing. Podcasting is not a business. Okay. Okay. You can, I mean, it's just like YouTube videos are not a business, but there are people making a fortune on YouTube biz, uh, videos, right? So it depends on how, what your strategy is for your business if it, and what your business is. But for the, for the average person to say, you know what, I'm going to do a podcast and I'm going to make money at it. You have very, you have a limited number of choices. You can get a sponsor, you can get advertisers. You can write a book and sell a book off your podcast. You could be coaching and you could sell your coaching off of the podcast. You, you, it becomes really quite limited. Mm. What you need to do is be very, this is all about becoming the expert and positioning yourself. Like Terry, who was on last week, I went out and bought three of his books, by the way. Which one did you buy, by the way? Uh, the one about planning, the one about the no best thing plans. Yeah, and then yes. no relations. No relations, yes. And uh, up, up and down. No, no. Oh, what was the other one? Poles apart. Yes, yes, yes. I gave that to my sister because I said we're always poles apart, <laughs> and I gave one to my brother-in-law because we're not related, <laughs> except by marriage, and then the other one I gave to my mom, and uh, so yes, yeah, so everybody had a big laugh at it, and they were really enjoying it. But yeah. what he did is he wrote a book, and nobody would pick up the book. So it's, you gotta, so what he did was he then took every chapter and he made it an episode in his podcast and he got this following. And what happened was he got encouragement from the following. Oh, we love your book. We love the story. We love the story. And then he said, okay, I'm going to self-publish it. And some of those people bought it. Then when you've got a bit of a following and if it's 10,000 people or 2,000 people or 200,000 people, people start noticing. And what happened was the publisher said, wow, like you, you're popular. The book is well received. Great. We want, we, we want to publish it. And he's published all of them through one publisher. So the, it's, a, it's a marketing channel that positions you as an expert that has not got the competition that YouTube or blogging or websites have. So I, I don't look at it at all as a, it's to me, it's a trick question. Can you make money podcasting? So can you make money on full page ads in the New York Times? Mm. I can't. Yes. I'll spend a hundred thousand dollars on it. There's no way I'm making a hundred thousand dollars on my ad. I don't think maybe I'm wrong, but the chances are that's not what happens. Those people don't. I mean, if you, I can put an, a, a commercial on TV, right? Like the car companies do it all the time. 
They go, oh, great. We've got a car commercial on at 6.05 on the news. Wait for that those sales to charge in. Oh, no, that's not how it works, right? Not not in that, that arena. So I totally yeah. agree, Scott. Yeah. Totally. So, I was just so, reading a podcast here, which just as I agree, podcast is a marketing, marketing strategy for your business. And that's kind of what I use it for as well. No different than you know the books that we published. Um, we use the book. I know I'm not a best-selling author, like you know the the woman who wrote um, the Harry Potter series, where people are going to be beating you know down the stores to buy my book. But I use that book as a tool, like a business card for marketing strategy and podcasting. Scott, I, I agree, it's exactly the same way. And the story you just shared, you know Terry Fallis, who was with us last Monday on the podcast, I play ball hockey with Terry as twin brother. And, you know, if you were here last week, Terry was saying when he published his book, or actually when, before he published it, he had, he was turned down by so many publishers. It wasn't funny. And publishers weren't even responding to it. Remember that, Scott? Yeah. He said, I didn't even get rejected. Yeah. He said, if I, if I got a rejection letter, I would feel good. Didn't even get rejected. So then he got a book. He, so he self-published it. And on the Danforth, right, um, in Greek Town, he had, he had, uh, uh, I remember that. He had a, a, a book launch and he says, you know, my friends and family showed up, <laughs> right, my friends and family. And then he said he had a successful book launch with a bookstore, did a book launch, asked him to come and do a book launch. He said, it was great. We, a hundred percent of the people that came bought a book and we sold two books that day. That was that was it. I mean, it, it was just a huge flop, and and so, like you said, Scott Terry shared his story that he started podcasting each chapter at a time, and then Random House, um, uh, McC Stuart McClell, what's the name of the publisher now? McC McClellan Stewart. They picked him up, and now he's signed a contract for the seventh book. Two of the books, the one you're talking about, the best laid plans, one. The Stephen Leacock Award for Humor. Yeah, he's won it two of the last. He's won it the last two years, and he's a finalist, one of three finalists for this year. So he's he really amazing. When you think about how he could have not written any of those books because he did the first one and no one was interested, and then he disappeared. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the podcasting was what kind of got him over that hump, I think, is great. And it's such an easy, easy way to do it, right? I mean, audiobooks are huge. So yes. you know already he writes fiction, parodies, that sort of stuff, humor. Mm -hmm. And so you know already that people love mysteries and detective novels and science fiction and romance and everything else. So you you know that they're buying audiobooks. So you, if you're wanting to be a fiction writer, this is a great way to do it. You just, I mean, and really it's getting back to the roots of writing. I mean, didn't we start off writing? I think I said this last week, you know, sitting around the campfire under the stars with the saber tooth tigers, just outside the area of the light, you know, telling stories. And then we learned how to write. So we wrote the stories, but really it's a, it's a verbal oral tradition. And so uh, I just think this is going back to the roots where it's like, yeah, I'm writing, I'm reading my writing. I mean, you, oftentimes you'll see authors go someplace and they will read a selection from their book. That's what the book launches all are kind of all about, right? Yes. And yes. This, this is just doing it virtually with 200 million potential listeners wow. because that's how many iPhones and iPads and iPods and stuff is out there. And now add a couple more billion because the Android phones are now on board with the podcasting. Wow. That's huge. It's huge. I mean, so many people started listening to podcasting. My son lives in uh, Asia, and uh, I was talking to him recently, and, and he said, Dad, I'm listening to podcasting now. And, and, and at first, my ego got so big, you can imagine, it just swelled up. I'm thinking, wow, my kid. He's listening now, to you for sure, Gordon. We all know to to Dad. <laughs> so I asked him, well, son, what are you listening to? He says, well, number one, I'm listening to Tim Ferriss, the four-hour work week. And uh, what was the other one? Oh, Brian Tracy, the psychology of um, winning. So he knew how to bring me back down to size, right? Oh, yeah. And, and he should have said, and of course, the third person I listened to, Dad, is you. I don't know. I, I wish he would have, Scott, right? But he didn't. But, you know, podcasting, like Tim Ferriss is another individual that we know is hugely successful. And if you get a chance, Google it. He was recently interviewed by a podcaster 
And here's Tim Ferriss, who's the person who teaches how to work a four hour work week. That's it, how to work a four hour, like work less and make more money or work less and have less stress. And in this podcast uh, where Tim Ferriss was a guest, he actually talked about how people don't realize this, but at one point he was so depressed, he almost committed suicide. Mm. And you know, he, the point he was trying to drive home is that mental health is, is very real, but here's Tim Ferriss, ultra, ultra successful. And then he started talking about uh, podcasting and there's a picture of him in front of um, a harvest table. And in this podcast, he says, 90% of my podcast is actually done right here at this table. So for those of you who are thinking, do I need expensive equipment? Do I need expensive mic? Do I need all kinds of things to get? No. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scott, maybe you could talk about that in a second, some things you need to get started. But I'll try to finish this story real quick about uh, Tim Ferriss. And he went on to say that when he started his podcast, because he was kind of burned out, he just thought, you know, why don't I try something new? He started trying, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll try six episodes to see if I like it or not. And to make a long story short, he now has over 60 million plus downloads on iTunes. Wow. And for him, he already has a huge following. He already has a huge following. And the person asked him, have you monetized it? Because I have some. And he says, if I fully monetize it from advertisers, he says, I think I could probably make two to four million dollars a year just just my podcast. Uh, that's that's the kind of potential, and it just scares me when you start telling me about Google Play, mm-hmm. right? It's it, this this thing hasn't even started yet, uh, and the type of um, uh, well, and the CarPlay too. I mean, that's I mean, yes. how many cars are there? And every new car is going to have, and every new stereo system in an old car. Is going to have access to podcasts. Wow, wow! So instead of going to work and listening to the radio and every three minutes hearing a commercial or however long the song is, uh, you'll be able to listen to whatever you want to listen to for as long as you want, almost always commercial free. Yes, because that's the nature of the beast, right? So it's just an amazing way to learn anything you want to learn from people that are experts in their field. Uh, who usually don't put any interruptive marketing commercials ads in the podcast. It's wonderful. It's amazing. You know, Scott, I was on uh, my podcast for earlier today with um, the new client in Chicago and the bells and whistles you put into my podcast world is incredible. And the simplicity, I mean, it just blows me away. The simplicity of how you just have to type a few lines. Everything's all put together. Where you just type everything in, boom, drop in your audio and there's your podcast. It's it's on your own page. It's on iTunes. It's 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 incredible. Anybody anywhere around the world, sim- very simple. They can start a podcast. Um, what what do you need, Scott? Do you need expensive mics to to do this? No. Uh, what'll happen is as you get better, as you listen, as your ear improves, you're going to want to get more microphones. But basically, you can start off with uh, you know the computer microphone that you've got. I don't necessarily recommend it. But uh, you can, for 30, 50, 100 bucks, you can get a half decent microphone. I'm visiting my mom tomorrow is her birthday. So I brought over the blue snowball. I thought you were going to say you're buying your mom a, a microphone for her birthday. No, but I, this, has, this is one that I got a while back. And then I got another one and another one. And so I don't use it. And I thought, well, you know, I come over to my mom every month or so. So why don't I just leave a mic here? And then I don't have to bring one back, right? So you can get a nice mic. You go to Best Buy and you just say, look, I need a microphone to record on my computer. They'll give you that. Or they'll give you a headset. Like I often use the Logitech he- wire USB headset. Right? You just ask for it's like 60 or 70 bucks. It's, it's easy to do. Then you get something like Audacity. And Audacity is a free program for the Mac and for the PC. Push the little red button blah, 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 push it again, it stops. And then you export it as an MP3 and upload it if you want. You can, there's lots of tutorials on, on, uh, on the internet on how to do video editing if you want to remove ums and ahs or if you want to add some music or that sort of stuff. It's all simple. You do it two or three times and you'll have it done, right? And, uh, and that's it. That's, I mean, all you need is your computer. And, uh, you know, I would say have a computer have a nice mic, get Audacity, it's free, and a good uh, podcasting host like my podcast world, and you're set. 
Amazing. Amazing. Um, I cast your religious suggested. Are you familiar with that, Scott? Yeah, absolutely. Andrew knows his stuff. Yeah. Now, your, your snowball, I remember looking it up two weeks ago on Amazon. It was around 50, 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I went to, um, not Best Buy, I went to Staples. And there were 100 bucks in the store. So where did you get yours? Did you go into a store? Did you buy it? I went on Craigslist, and okay. some guy had it for sale for forty dollars and never opened it. Okay. So, and he was just like half half a mile away from me, so I went over, gave him forty bucks, and I got it. That's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. a very nice little microphone. Okay, Scott. So let's say for someone starting out, you mentioned Andrew's very verse and. Um, podcasting but let's say somebody's a newbie you know like like myself i only got started recently In talk to me a little bit about intro and outro like how it's what's the importance of an intro and outro should you have one should you not have one if you how, and, and where's a good place to kind of produce that intro and outro like should you have somebody else's voice on there or should you do your own voice for an intro and outro if you're starting out i would say don't bother okay because all it is is a reason not to go any further got it okay right? For years, I started off one of my podcasts with, welcome back, everybody. This is Weight Loss in the Mind. Think fit, be fit. I'm Scott Patton. He's Shane James. And we're going to be talking about, you know, you need to exercise more. You know, you need to eat better. You're not doing it. Why? It's because what's going on between your ears. And we're going to fix that in today's podcast. So Shane, what are we talking about? And then Shane would take over and he'd talk and we'd have a conversation. So once I said that, and I haven't actually said what I just said for probably six years, mm. so you know maybe five years. So I mean, it gets burned. You just say it over and over and over, and it gets burned in. So the first couple of times I had it written out, okay, what do I want to say? I want to say the name of the show. And you listen to the radio. How do these guys start and stop their shows too? Right? Gives you some ideas. But it's basically the name of the show, who you are, what the show is about, and then get into it. And and that's what we did. And then I would just take a little bit of music, thirty seconds on the end. 30 seconds on the beginning and that was it because you'd hear the music you'd go oh yeah that's the weight loss and mind show and then you'd hear the music at the end oh i guess they're over if you weren't listening and hearing that you know i was saying goodbye then you would know we were over so i just you just keep it really really simple and what happens is no intro outro in the beginning okay it's just you talking you push record hi this is Scott Patton, we're going to be talking about internet marketing, blah, blah, blah. I talk about internet marketing. Here's my guest, Gordon, blah, blah, blah. Thank you very much. Now, you put that into, it's in Audacity. Usually, if if you don't do anything like, oh, I forgot what I was going to say, or Gordon, you know, there's noise in the background. Like, if there's nothing happening and it's clean, I just export it and I'm done, right? Get it up as fast as you can. Get it up as fast as you can. Because each time you talk, you will talk better. Mm. Then after a while, you'll say the odd time you'll have to, you know, you highlight a little bit, hit delete, and it disappears. And it's so easy. Oh, great. Now I can edit. And then you'll learn, oh, I've got a nice little soundtrack here that's um, that I bought the rights to so I can use on my podcast. I'm just going to add it at the beginning and add it at the end. And then it's really nice, like 25, 20 seconds from the end. The music starts up and then you finish and then there's another 10 seconds of music and it fades off and that's kind of nice, right? Then you might go to Fiverr and say, I want to have a professional voiceover guy do the morning, do, do, the, do the morning show, do huh. the beginning of the podcast, right? So I actually bought something from a, through an affiliate link by Todd Gross, who happens to be a voiceover artist. And so he gave away a one minute mm. intro. So he... Oftentimes, if you listen to my podcast, you'll hear Todd and at the end, again, you know, and so I gave him the script. He did it. And I said, you know, Johnny Carson at the end, he goes, they go, here's Johnny. I want to hear Scott. So he does this imitation of Johnny Carson at the end, except it's here's Scott. I love it. Right. So I pop that in and then I put a little music underneath it. And that's that's my intro. So the thing that you have to understand about podcasting that's different than radio. OK, so I'm flipping through radio stations and all of a sudden it's the top of the hour and the show starts and they do their whole fancy intro thing. I have no clue who I'm listening to. Mm -hmm. They have to tell me, right? But I downloaded your show. I know who you are and I know what you're talking about. And you don't have to give me 30 seconds or th three minutes of intro. 
Okay. Just get into the stuff and get going. So you need to balance that a little bit yes. between brand new people who have no clue who you are and the people that come every time and they get like, there was a guy who did um, 30 second tips, hmm. did a little bit of music, give a sip, a little bit of music. Then he decided in his wisdom that he was going to make a CD and give it away. Here are my, you know, 300 tips for living a better life on CD, Scott. Thank you very much. So I throw it into my CD player. I'm driving and I hear the same intro, then 30 seconds of a tip, and then the same extra 300 times. Mm. Guess what I'm thinking after the 10th time? Why did you put this boring music? It's not boring, but it's boring to me now because yes. I'm, I've had enough of this music. And I've had enough of him saying, this is, you know, whatever his name is. And here's my domain name. And every 30 seconds, I'm hearing this over and over and over. Forget it. So you can get away without the intros and extras. I like the extras. Like that's to me is the most important because it's telling people you're done. Like we're done. Here's some things you can do. Great. Thank you very much for reminding me. Um, and if if I'm listening to five of your podcasts in a row, bin, I mean, don't forget Netflix, bin watching, right? Like I like Daredevil. Okay, I like Super Love it. My favorite show? Yeah. yeah. Well, Daredevil, when you watch the beginning of Daredevil and it's episode 10, mm -hmm. they don't give you a recap. Okay. Right? If you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or arrow or the flash or whatever they give you recaps the first 60 seconds is always what's happened that's related to what's so you're not lost hmm. because they know it's been a week yes on daredevil they don't care they 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 assume that you watched two hours ago you lost watched one and an hour ago you watched two and now you're watching three yes and, yes andrew i love all those shows too can't i can't i just can't, I'm so excited because it's fi the finals, you know, the final episodes are coming up. What's going to happen? But uh, so that's the thing that you have to understand with podcasting. Like somebody, like our weight loss in the mind podcast, someone says, you know what? I just downloaded your latest one. It was 86. Now I've gone to the beginning and I've downloaded number one to 85 and I'm starting at one. Mm. Binge listening happens, right? So you need to balance that. You've got to be careful that you don't. Always have the intro, always have the same thing because you don't want to irritate people. And so, you know, it's just like, hey, you, this this is the show. This is who I am. This is what we're talking about today. Let's get going. And yes. people will really appreciate it. There was somebody told me that if you watch a YouTube video, you can basically go one quarter of the way into it and start there and you will never have missed a thing. Because they all do this fancy stuff at the beginning, and then they talk about who, I mean, like, they'll take webinar. This is really true if it's a webinar that they recorded and uploaded. Mm. The first, well, can you hear me? Can you do that? Like, why don't you guys cut that out and just start at the beginning? Yes. No, you got to hear all. So I typically would just take my thing, and I'll go about a quarter of the way, and then they're actually getting into it. And it's not just the webinars, it's everybody, it seems like, it's, unless it's a music video, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, ah, how, what? why are you not thinking about your audience, is what I really want to know, right? Like, if yeah. you were really seriously That's thinking about your audience, you wouldn't do that. So, and of course, you need to know who your audience is, because yeah. maybe your audience likes that musical stuff, right? Yeah. And I have, like, my, this course here, and you'll notice at the beginning, uh, of each section, the intro video has this musical thing floating around, and then it says Power Podcasters. Yes. I wanted to put it on every video, and then I realized, like, oh, because I watched somebody that did. It drives you crazy. Like, I know what the course is, right? You don't have to have this stuff flying yeah. around, and then boom, yeah. there it is. I saw that, Scott. I saw, saw somebody with a, um, a Udemy course, and it was long. It was about six hours. And then every video, they had the same intro and they had the three same minutes. Outro, right. And the reality, like what you said, content is so important. Like know your audience, your audience is there anyway. So if they've already clicked to download your, your show, they just want to, yeah. they want to know what you have to say. They want to know, like, does it apply to me? Uh, what kind of results can I get from, from what you shared with me? And this isn't a Hollywood production, is it? We're not, no, but you know what? It depends. Like if you spent the last 20 years in TV and radio, 
you don't listen to Scott. <laughs> you already know how to do all of this stuff and you can make it sound really, really yes. professional. So, but if you're just starting out, like don't yep. do it because it will just make you procrastinate. I know people who were with the CBC, which is the national Canadian radio station and yep. they did their podcast. So here's a, just a totally, this is not what Scott would ever tell you to do, but here's what happened. So he's with CBC forever and ever and ever. He decides he's going to do a, a podcast to help dads who are going through divorce. Okay. Cause he went through it. So he did. And so what his business is, since we want to talk about, can you make money with your podcast is marketing your business using a podcast. His business was consulting and coaching fathers going through divorce. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a therapist. I've gone through this. I know what the laws are. I can help you. And then you work with your lawyer or whatever. Because most of these guys are just, they're just basket cases, right? They're losing their kids. They think they'll never see their kids. They're losing their half their money and everything else, right? So there's huge fear and huge emotional trauma going on. He did 12 one-hour shows starting with point number one, ending with point number 12. And he put them up on on uh, iTunes so, or he podcasted, it, right? I'm going like 12. And of course... They sound like the BBC or NPR or CBC, right? I mean, music coming in and then there's this and then there's that. I mean, it is full on radio production. Well, he starts getting phone calls from all around the world and he only deals with people in Toronto, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then he gets people in Toronto calling him. And nice. he, yeah. And so he, they didn't. And so it's like, he, you know, hello. Yeah, I, I need help. Can you help me? Yeah. Well, what do you need help with? Well, I need help. I'm going through a divorce. Of course, why else would I be calling you? That's like, and there was just, there was no selling involved. It was like, I know you, you can help me. I need your help. Tell yeah. me how much money to send you and I'm going to send you and let's get started. Right. So he, he short circuited his whole selling process. And nice. He, nice. The, I'm up, I'm up on stage telling people about this. And I said that he, cause he would record how, who, who came from where, and he said, this was worth $35,000 in extra income in the first year. Yeah. So I went around the world telling people that. And then I, when I saw him and his wife, I said, well, you know, I've been telling people this. Oh, no, 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 no. That's wrong. Go, oh, no. I've been misleading all these people. 75 grand in extra business the first wow. year. Yeah. And he said, we didn't have to sell a thing. It was like, and so he would say to them, like, well, how did you find us? Oh, I listened to your podcast. Well, how do you know what you... I, no, no, you don't understand. I studied your, I mean, this is a hot audience, right? I studied your podcast. I listened to all of them two or three times. I know you know what to do. And even listening to it, I don't know what to do. I need your help. So please help me. And that's what he would do. So the, the power of the podcasting to connect with your audience and to move people yeah. is astounding. Well, I guess, you know, that's the key, right? Connect with your audience. Move them. If, you can, if you can create um, credibility, that's really what you want in the pocket. Just create credibility. You know, people ask me all the time, how do you close? Like, you know, we teach speakers how to present, sell, close on stage. And the reality is you don't, yeah, there's techniques, but do you really close? No, I don't think so. If a person likes you and trusts you, they're, they're, they're going to buy from you. And if you have something that's hot that they really want or need and know yes. that they want and need it. Yes. Where you go. So the point being is that if you're a professional broadcaster and you know your way around all these mixing boards and stuff, and you like doing that, go for it. But don't think that you need to do that in order to podcast. In fact, it's a, just an excuse to procrastinate. Procrastinate, yeah. That's all I have. I've actually been using my iPhone earphones, and that's it. You know, I lost them the other day, so that's why I'm using these. But, Scott, there's times when, you know, my business partner, Randy, has uh, the Empowerment Radio Show, and we use uh, free conference call HD. So we do a lot of interviews. I would say 99% of our shows are interviews. So we'll have someone call into there. We'll call in. We'll do the interview. When they're ready, we hit record. And as soon as we're done recording, boom, there's a there's an HD quality MP3 file. And then there's times when we're just so busy, like neither one of us can actually do an interview. And I may just take out my iPhone and I take my Mammo recorder. I plug in my earphone. And maybe I'll ramble for five minutes on a topic. You know, I remember one day I talked about um, 
I won't go into, but it was just about leadership. So I did a five minute talk on leadership. And then I send Randy the file. She put it on to, um, she, she, I think she took audacity, like what you said, took the file, boom, put it up on her, on her site and onto iTunes. And it was done. That was done. You know, she put it onto social media and we had some people say, Hey, that was a fantastic message. Right. So yeah. it's, it's simple. Very, very simple. Keep it simple. And then you're going to be doing it over and over again. And then you get the feedback from your audience tells you if you need to change your direction or head in a certain direction. And then you do that and you're, uh, you know, you're happy. If you get the wrong feedback, then make the change. But it's really, it's really important that you just start and that you work for it. And you know what? You may, it's all right to fail. Like you can do a podcast and, and you have three listeners and it's like, okay, this, you know, obviously is nobody is interested in how to play hopscotch in the kindergarten yard or something, uh -huh. you know? So I'll go do something else and you can do something else until you hit, until you hit the sweet spot. And I think that's the key too. It's like, uh, just, just do it. And then you learn and w doors open when you take action. And that's the other thing. Like somebody may listen to you and say, you know what you were, I loved what you were saying. I've got a conference next month. was wondering if you'd come out, blah, 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 blah. Oh, great. Or I love what you were saying. Yep. I can quote you on this topic, you know, come out and help. Scott, you and I have a mutual friend, Sam, Sam Crowley. Yes. Sam's got a, a, a podcast every day, Saturday. Yeah. I remember Sam telling me, you know, he knew nothing about podcasts and he just started a podcast and podcast and podcast. Make a long story short, he's got a million, 1.8 million some odd people who downloaded his iTunes. But he was sharing with me, he got a call one day and it was Les Brown. Yeah. Right. At first he thought, come on, buddy, like stop yanking my chain. He thought it was a friend of his. It was Les Brown. Yeah. Right. Loved his motivational show. Knew um, Sam had, had some following. I think it was in California. Uh, Les Brown was going to be doing an event out there. And, and Les Brown actually initiated a call and said, hey, Sam, listen, I heard all about you. I got the show. Would you mind right, doing a podcast to me so your, um, your, your audience out there can uh, find out about the event that I'm having? So. Nice. Like you said, doors will open and make a long story short today, Sam is an international speaker and he shares stages with uh, individuals like Les Brown. So I taught Sam how to podcast. Yeah. All, all that came out of podcasting. Yeah. He actually stole the idea of his show from me because I was uh, going to start one called Every Day is Monday. Okay. It didn't work. It, nobody would listen to it. Well, I mean, Scott, you, you know, recently you, Here's what I love about you. I know you don't like talking about it. I know you don't, you're too humble about your own success. And you want me to hang up and kick, you want me to kick you off the blab? No, 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 no. I think it's important for you to, to be on because, you know, it's not just podcasting. Uh, it doesn't matter what business we're in, whether it's an online business or an offline business. The goal is what, what are our desired results? And I think for most of us, the results we're looking for is how do we generate more leads so we can make more income? Right. Whether that income is to pay for our bills, pay for you know the, the roof over our head or our children's education or or saving money for retirement, whatever, whatever that is, we're looking for some desired results. And there's people who will teach courses, whether it's podcasting or Internet marketing. They make a ton of money because I have some friends who do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the only way they make money is selling courses. And, you know, I'm all about a free enterprise system and, and all the power to them for making money. What I love about what you do is, you know, for, for what, eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks, you were in South America. But while you were there, you could still do business and still generate an income. That to me is, that to me is the true lifestyle of someone who's actually uh, making money let's say online or living the, the, um, the internet lifestyle. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's you. And that's really what I want to share with the folks on, on here to, uh, on the call that's join us, you know, I, I and I appreciate when taking the time to join us because, um, it's seven o'clock here in Toronto and you've mentioned Toronto earlier. You mm -hmm. can tell the folks in Toronto, Scott, you just can't tell them much. Right. <laughs> but, um, it's seven o'clock here. It's, um, you could be doing anything else, but you're here. And I want to let you know that Scott knows what he's doing. So podcast made easy to me. That's 10 and a half hours of training. And, you know, Scott, I know, for example, Sam's learned quite a bit from you about podcasting. And, and he's generated probably six, seven figure income in his speaking 
industry. Is that going to happen for everybody? Maybe not. So if you get a chance to download Scott's uh, podcast, Made Easy, of course, do it. Do it. I, I've seen other people charge thousands and thousands of dollars for, for the same information. The fact that, Scott, you're generous enough to to offer that as a gift for free to everyone that's on the call, that, 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 that's, um, that's pretty amazing. So what I like to do, Scott, is um, maybe just turn this back to you. I know we've been going for about uh, over an hour now. Uh, it's time to wrap up. To, to wrap it up and obviously this is going to be recorded and folks can come back and listen to it and if uh, anybody's got any uh further questions that you know yourself or myself can can help out they can certainly reach out to us and we'd be happy to to you know do whatever we can to help get the podcast going or if you've got a super successful podcast already going and kind of want to know how to elevate it to the next level uh that's what we're here for okay that's right. And if you've also got some uh, tips on how to make your pot, how you made your podcast successful, like we'd love to have you join us and share those, uh, share those nuggets of wisdom. We, we don't have the, the uh, we don't have all the answers and we're always learning too. So thank you for that, Gordon. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate you as well. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, this has been the, my podcast world blab and internet marketing unleashed podcast below me is a link to get to my podcast course for free www.mypodcastworld if you're looking for some place to host your podcast uh, as gordon said it's 99 dollars a year and that's the uh, unbelievable value yeah, yeah. So. and it's the and i made it because i wanted it the way i, I wanted it to work for all the things that i thought of that i needed I wasn't seeing and there are still are things in there that nobody else does or has thought of and i just i'm just shocked that they haven't thought oh of it, but God, i do have a question for you somebody asked the other day so for 99 bucks that's for a whole year yeah yeah i have a show i have a power and radio show is the show that we have right now what if i want to add a second show say say i have a, another business where i also teach let's say health and wellness do i have to pay for another um Pay another ninety nine bucks for that second show. Um, I think we have it. You can have three shows on for ninety nine dollars. Wow! Wow! That's yeah. Incredible. And that's right now. That might change in the future. It's it's because okay. we are working on a system for people that want to be uh, like podcast producers and they want to look after like thirty podcasts for yeah. thirty different podcasts, that sort of thing. So we're making some big moves there. But right now. No, so you can add more shows if you want to have. That's unbelievable. Yeah. No, it's good value. And it's lots of fun. It's a lot, it is a lot of fun. So good. Thank you very much for asking that question, Gordon. And thank you for joining us, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.